Hello, I'm Carlos Rodríguez and I'm here to talk about learning theory. I'm going to tell you about one learning theory. If you only know one thing about learning theory, this is it, is the Kolb cycle. So Kolb was a psychologist and an educationalist who um, became quite famous in 1984 when he uh, published his thoughts around knowledge. Uh, the key idea was, uh, he said, that learning is the process by which knowledge is created by the transformation of experience. So the idea is experience becomes knowledge through the process of learning. Yes, and, um, and he kind of explained this uh, as a cycle of four different activities. He said that it, knowledge is something that the individual, uh, so learning is something that the individual does and that it starts with an experience. Yes? So something happens or you do something and that is followed by a process of reflection. So you uh, think or you connect or you uh, realize, y you become aware of what you have just experienced. Yes? And that is followed by a process where you connect your reflections and your, your emotions and all that the experience has caused to existing or create new conceptual frameworks. So a, a new set of ideas or concepts that allow you to understand what you've just experienced. And sometimes these are concepts that existed before you came across them or concepts that you develop. But um, the, the next step in the process is that you use that conceptualization to plan and arrange for an, a new experience to happen. So an experiment or, or, or a repeat of the experience. And then you experience again. And then um, that is followed by reflection, which is followed by conceptualizations. And this is a cycle that keeps going. And as long as you learn, you're doing those four things, not necessarily in that sequence. This theory of learning doesn't just tell us how people learn, but it also gives us an idea of how people should teach. So for instance, um, if you follow this model of learning, any teaching should start with an experience, which might be telling a story in a lecture or might be watching a procedure or even doing something actively. Um, and that then that is then pr uh, followed by a process of uh, reflecting and the teacher can help in the process of reflecting by contextualizing the experience and helping people uh, reflect, facilitating that. And that is followed by a process of uh, um, uh, connecting the reflections to existing uh, frameworks, so, so existing literature or existing way of thinking about this. Um, uh, that is often what people do in lectures, you know, they explain um, uh, existing conceptual frameworks and that on the basis of that then a new experience is planned and is organized who leads to another experience and then the cycle continues. That's the key idea of the uh, Kolb cycle is that learning is a process that includes those four areas. Um, now that that cycle um, applies to all kinds of learning. So for an example would be um, uh, you uh, learn how to draw blood. So you observe somebody drawing blood, that's an experience, then you reflect on it, wow, um, you know, the, the patient screamed and it was difficult to respond to that or, or whatever. Or I reflect that this is not quite like giving an injection because there are differences. And then, and then you conceptualize it. So you said, well, drawing blood is different because of whatever happens, the type of needles, the type of processes, the type of risks um, and the conceptual framework around them, you know, how you need to, um, to do a ligature, uh, the why, uh, the, uh, the veins, the arteries, you, know, you, you need to understand what's happening. And on the basis of that, then you plan a new experience, which is I will draw blood next time from an uh, easy patient. And then you do it. Then you, that's followed by reflection, that's followed by conceptualization, etc. The idea is, is, a, is a cycle that keeps happening as long as you're learning. There are a few important ideas with, with the Kolb cycle. So one is that um, I have initiated this cycle with experience and, and some people prefer to do that. Um, but other people prefer to read about things first bef before they have an experience. The idea is you can access this cycle from different entry points. You know, so how you initiate it is different. 
The other idea is that some people are particularly good at one of those four. They have the strengths, and and sometimes they're called, um, you know, learning styles. You know that you 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 you're drawn to experience, and that's what you're good at, and and you're not so much at conceptualization or vice versa. But the idea here is that strengths and weaknesses uh, need to be managed by the teacher or the learner, uh, because all four are necessary. So you might be good at one and weak at the other, but you need to uh, cater to those differences so you can do all of it. Also, sometimes learning gets confused between all those four um, uh, stages. So somebody might be in the middle of an experience and trying to conceptualize it or uh, trying to reflect whilst planning the next bit. And it helps to understand that as a process. Um, the last bit is that this is a sequence uh, uh, it makes sense to me that sequence, but some people uh, uh, switch some of the stages, so so it doesn't necessarily have to be a sequence. But um, uh, I think it makes sense to make it into a sequence. Okay, so that's the the four stages of learning. Um, you need to experience, you need to reflect, you need to conceptualize, and you need to organize for a next experience. And that's the key idea of call. The idea that learning is the process whereby knowledge is created through the transformation of experience and that's number one learning theory if you only if you only learn one uh, this is it you can then use this to plan curricula or even to deliver lectures i hope you found this helpful i certainly did